Hi, everyone. Um, well, I'm ready for bed, but I thought before I go to bed tonight, because I'm not really ready for bed, I'm ready for bed. Like I've got my shower, got my nightgown on, and I'm ready. But I wanted to do this little video. Um, I've been asked by a couple of my um, subscribers to help them know how I'm doing these Oh, wait a minute. Before I do that, okay, rewind. I want to show you first. I got some... <coughs> I got some Happy Mail. Two Happy Mails. Three Happy Mails. Darn. Do not start coughing, Elizabeth. Gosh. Okay. This one here, I got this from Lona. Lona sent me this from South Carolina, where apparently they have a foot of snow. And um, in this package, she sent me, okay, let me see, where did she put that? Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. This one, oh, let me get this right now. This one came from, oh, she's in North Carolina. Oh, South Carolina is where Lona is, and North Carolina is where Vicki is. Me and Jeffrey were just studying on the Carolinas, how it it first started out as Carolina, and but the state was too big for the government, and um, so they broke it in half in 1632 or something like that and made it north and south. But anyway, we were studying for a test. Ooh, today was going to be the test. Oh, I wonder how he did. But I got this beautiful Christmas card, and this came from Vicki, and she lives in North Carolina. And she said they have a foot of snow, and that's in Carolina. Now, I just talked to um, Pat on the telephone. Pat says they don't have any snow up there in Minnesota. That's weird as ever. Okay, then this happy mail right here. This came from, who did I say? Oh, Lona. See how bad I am at remembering things from one second to the other? Now, she sent, look at these beautiful papers, which will be used in the next journal that I put together. I, I have one started because what I'm doing is I'm cutting papers now to five and a half by eight and a half. And those are the pages that go in my journal because I'm spiral binding them. And so if they're a little bit smaller, it's good because it'll fit in. And look at this one, how pretty. So I'll put the binding on this part where this part is, is still showing. So that'll be so pretty. And this one here, and this one is on, um, on a um, book page where she put the paint. This one here looks like it might have came from... This same one. Yep, that did. Look, it's I got that puzzle put together. So that's two pages and another page. And here is, this is, it, it feels like vellum, but it's dyed. And this one is, is done where she did the boil, the um, eco dyeing of the leaves. And look at how pretty that is. Where you can see the leaf in there. This is handmade paper. This is going to make a beautiful, beautiful um, page with that deckled edge. Do you see how that edge is all deckled around? That is going to make a beautiful page. And in the paper is like flower petals. That is pretty. I've done that before, but it's been a long time. Here is a dyed, probably tea dyed, but it's kind of pink, so I'm not sure. This one here looks tea or coffee dyed beautiful page. This is a book page and look at the colors in this one. That's going to make, a, and on the other side too, that's going to make a beautiful page. And here she sent a sunflower. Not sure exactly how I'm going to use this one, but it will be used as well because it's a little longer than eight and a half. So that one's got to float around in my brain. She sent pattern tissue, and any of us, all of us who do junk journals and crafting know how important we use a lot of pattern tissue. This is really, really good. And here she sent a tag. This tag is made with, 
it's got like cardstock on the back, but the front of it is fabric. This is fabric on the front. And I had never thought of making a tag by putting the whole front of fabric. So I am inspired by that. And then here we have a beautiful, um, a beautiful cluster. Look at all the things on there. Look at there. That's got the lace. It's got the vintage image. It's got a button and it's got fiber. And it is just beautiful. I love this one so much. That is so nice. And then she sent flowers. Looks like either a punch or maybe a cricket cut. Those are pretty. Love the colors. Oh, here's a third one. And then this Christmas card. This one I would say is um, recycled. Looks like because it's it's she's got like the teddy bear is one. I love teddy bears. The teddy bear is one part of a Christmas card. The Merry Christmas is a, another part. This red is a ribbon. This gold down here is a whole nother piece, and um, and it's just beautiful. And then she put a sticker on the back. So she started with, looks like she started with a Christmas card. And then she just went to town on rebuilding it and putting her touch to it. And so, and then she signs the inside and it's even got some glittery washi tape. Um, well, I don't know if it's washi tape or if she just cut a strip of maybe it's ribbon, but you can see how it just sparkles. And this is beautiful. Okay, and then in this little pocket, I love this pocket. And um, that's a fun pocket. And in here, this is a piece of, I would say, watercolor paper. And it feels, it's heavy. It's quite a heavy piece of watercolor paper, but it also has the eco dyeing on it. So it's about the size of an ATC. And so I think I would use this as an ATC and put something on it that would be um, plant oriented, botanical of some kind to finish this up as a as an ATC. And here is, this is a pumpkin die cut, but it's also watercolor paper. And then she put it in this envelope and which I think is so neat. I love this thing. It's got these little tabs where you put it together. So I don't know if that's a, um, if she has a die for that, maybe. Now that I can't shut it again, why can't I shut this? Okay, I'm just going to lay it up there because I know it shuts. This, look at this. I have, see, I already looked through my stuff, but this is a little journal, and I have got a collection of little tiny journals that I just love. Sometimes I just drag them out just to look at them. It's tied together with a little hair tie. I was looking for a hair tie the other day, couldn't find one to wad my hair up on top of my head. Maybe I'll, no, I'll leave that on here. But, and then she's got a string where she tied it together. And on the end, where did I see it? Here's an E, E for Elizabeth. And a button is tied there and another button here on this, on this string. It's, it feels like hemp cord. And then she's got like a metal sticker on the front. But look at these pages. Now, now when I make a junk journal, I, I go for junk. I love the junk of it. The, I mean, stuff that so many people would throw away. Some people make junk journals and they're made out of beautiful things. This is put together. This, the cover is a piece of, um, a piece of, um, pack packaging material. Here's a painty paper that is painted on the back of a page out of a magazine. And here's another piece of painty paper. 
and it looks almost like that might be off of a piece of a magazine. Look at the shapes. Do you see how they're just torn? This is out of an envelope. And then here, this is this this piece is on like a vellum piece of paper, but then there's paint. This is another piece of an envelope. Look at how these are put in there. And then with the paint on them, and look at how each page is a different, is a different shape. And some are torn, some are cut. This is another piece of that envelope. Here's some more painty paper. It's folded in half, so it's like a little tuck spot that something could be tucked in there. More paint. Look at this, how it's just torn. And all of it is different widths. They're not all exactly the same width as the spine of the book. Just different ones. Just different. And look how, and that one's folded so I could use it as a pocket. Here's the other side of the one. Oh, that's another one out of the magazine. And look at the paint in the middle and the beautiful colors. I have got a um, beautiful assortment already of these little books. Uh, not None exactly like this. Most of the ones I have are more, um, what would you say, more measured or something. This one is the most creative. That's a pocket. There's another vellum page. Look at this one. Another folded where I can tuck something in if I so choose. And look at this. Just look at these. And the envelope. That come from a paper bag, this come from an envelope, but look at the inks, inking on them, and look at here, this come off of a, like a page. I just got a, um, well, I put it away now, I just got a, like a magazine from, well, I guess I put that away, a magazine from um, Pat that has fun things from her area, from her neck of the woods up there in Minnesota that has no snow right now. And this looks like it might have come from a magazine like that. And then you just paint over it and look at it and glue more things to it. And look how beautiful. And you know, this, I see the beauty in this. I see. Now, if you don't understand junk journals, this might not be something that would interest you. But I am so, I love junk journals. I just love them. And so... I thank you so much, Lona, for this. And then look at even the envelope. Look at the painting on the envelope. See that? And the stamp of the Christmas tree there. Everything that wants to shine. And look at the stamps. Those will go my stamp album. But I wanted to show that before I got started with what I want to show you. I've had a few... Um, I've had a few ask me how I do my my um my journal covers. Now this is a journal cover that is near about finished. It's like a patchwork and um it's near about finished and I'm going to still be adding maybe some buttons here, maybe some beads, maybe some charms. It is sort of like in a, my book, because I love Bohemian and just, just a lot of Bohemian, but this looks more complicated than it really is. So I want to show you just really quick. I'm not actually going to do one because that means to the sewing machine and stuff. But see how the doily there is on the flip over. You know what I'm going to do here too is there, there'll be two buttons like right here and right here. So when this flips over after I get the pages in, then there'll be a button like here and here probably is where those will button. And then that'll be the closure for this. And then I'll show you... Um, Okay, here, okay, now here is one. Now this one, I didn't use patchwork. This one, I used a piece of this fabric that was sent to me by a subscriber, and it's just beautiful. And so that's what I used on this one. 
And so I put that fabric on both sides and it's stitched along each row of image. And then on the end of it, you'll see here is an extra piece of just something, whatever I find to put. And then I have this piece of binding here of this like braid right here. And, and this actually covers up some stitching too right there. And then here I put some lace that goes all the way around. And this is not finished yet because I'm still, I still have this binding that's going to go all the way around the edge. Okay. Now here is one that all I have here on this one is the patches. I have patches on both sides. And so that's all the farther I am on this one. I got a lot more to do on this one, but this is the beginning. And this is what I want to show you as to how I get this started. This right here is a piece of craft felt. And which you can pick up very inexpensively at Walmart or somewhere. And these here are two inch by two inch. Are they? Let me make sure before I say that. Nope, these are two and a half by two and a half inch squares. And so what I do with these squares is I just lay those. Now, of course, you can use any kind of squares or they don't even have to be squares. You can have any shapes, any sizes, but these just happen to be two and a half inch squares and I have a lot of them. So I'm, I just take all of those now and I just start laying them out. Now, um, I have, oh, let's see, um, Pat just sent me some, also some different, where did I put those? Let me see. Let's see, I've got quilting squ squares here. Oh, these are the ones Pat just sent me. Now, let me look at this because I may, I see now it doesn't, now look here, I can put this piece because these are, let me see what square this is. Yep, these are five inch squares. So these are perfect. Now I can put a five inch square right there and then go back over here with a, with a, two and a half inch square. Now these were purchased already cut over at Joanne Fabrics. And usually these are pretty expensive to get a bundle of them, but I found they were in the clearance basket. So I said, yep, I'm getting them. And so, and then I just, I just put these down in this way. Now over here, let me find another little piece. Ooh, I'm going to take this one. Mm, I'm going to put that one right there. So I'll have two of the large ones. And, um, and then I'll put, and then, and, and just lay these and just completely cover that piece of felt. Now, of course, most of you can just, if you've got fabrics of different kinds, this is all cotton, um, but if you have fabrics of different kinds, different styles, you can cut, you can cut your own. But now see, I didn't have to have these two like this, but I kind of like that. And I might even put one square in the middle of each of those. I might do that. 
Okay, now, this may be the inside, may be the outside. And then I go around and I, um, I just go ahead and pin each, it kind of, because you're laying them on felt, it kind of, um, they almost stick on there, you know, like a felt board, how we used to use felt boards when, well, I did when I was teaching um, kindergarten, you know, we used a lot of felt boards and, um, and this, and where the felt just stuck to the felt, well, this fabric just kind of sticks to the felt on there. And, um, but now this is how I do it. I just get them all pinned with just one pin right in the middle. And then when I go with the sewing machine, I will zigzag stitch it. I'm going to use the sewing machine, but I use a zigzag. And that way, if your line, now see, the, the fabrics are cut with the pinking shears too. So you've got that zigzag. And, um, and, okay, where's my gift of gab? I lose my train of thought so easy. I guess it really is bedtime. But, um, yeah, like I say, though, once once all these are pinned on, and I just, you just have to have one little pin right in the middle. I don't pin the edges because I don't want to sew over the pins. So once, so see, now that's ready to go on the sewing machine. And I'll just stitch zigzag down this line and down this line down this line or well, I'd probably maybe go down the middle first but everywhere and then I'll go around this piece and around the entire edge and then also I have what I just learned were called jelly rolls you can go and these were also on the clearance rack in the clearance bin at Joann's. And at the time I bought them, I said, I don't know what I'll do with these, but it just looks like they're going to be fun. So I first take it to the iron and I iron it right exactly in half. I press that with the iron exactly in half. And then there is enough on one of these strips to go all the way around. Like, so I sandwich, I sandwich this piece in like this and go all the way around. Oh, before that, though, once I get this side sewed, I'll sew this first. Then I'm going to turn it over and put patches on the other side. Maybe the same way, maybe not the same way. They may not have these 5 by 5s here. They might only have 4 by 4s and there might be a 5 by 5 behind this one. And so just to make it different. Like on this one, it's all the 2 and a half by 2 and a half. And there's just stitching everywhere. And um, there's some little spots that I didn't catch the stitching in. But then, like I say, I go later on and I um, add like this little piece of lace that might cover up something that I didn't get all the stitches. But, but after, when I get to the, when I get to where I think I'm finished before I actually put the pages in, I'll look at this and see if there's any pieces that are, that are, um, that are not stitched, but that, this one, it looks like all the pieces are, I've caught the edges of all of them. And so then here is just a little piece of, of um, sample fabric. Again, happy meal that came in. Because this is a little short for the books that I'm making. Um, let me see. What is the size of is 12? Okay, so this is 12 inches. Actually, the piece of, the piece of felt is 12 inches. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So, yeah, some 
something like that. And so, like I say, you can um, put anything. Okay, then, let me see, where's my little box? My little box of goodies. Then, when I get to, oops, I just threw all that in the floor. Then, on the edge, okay, like here, then on this one, you'll see this one here is near about finished, not quite. But see how I added this piece of beautiful um, edging. I put, this made the whole thing longer and added even another element, another element on here. And this was another piece of the, I'm not, I'm not an expert seamstress at all when it comes to these here journals, because these are my junk journals. And so I don't make it anything fancy. Now I was sent these here doilies and which are beautiful. And look how I did on the edge. Let me move this one. I put, this is the back of the journal cover. So I put, I laid this shirt, the doily down and I stitched it down this way and then all the way around here. That, and that's on the back of the journal. And so, and then I've got this little piece of lace, a little silver in it. And then the bind, the books that I'm putting in right now, anyway, now you can stitch signatures in here if you want to, but what I'm doing right now, which I may change, is I'm making my journals out of using my cinch because I have so many of the O-rings and I, I want to use them up, but I kind of, I kind of like that in here. And then once I get once I get that journal made with the O-rings here, then I just shut shut it, and then I go from the back here, and I stitch, and I stitch and catch those O-rings. I just stitch and catch the O-rings, and um, to hold that journal inside of this book. And then, like I say, this will flip over, and then there'll be like a button here, and a button here that will make the closure. So you'll close it with the button. And this to me is a little plain. So I will go because I have to get a little bohemian style in them. Then I will be putting some buttons on here or some, uh, some little gems of some kind. Sometimes I use a little piece of a, um, a, Jewelry piece, I take jewelry pieces around, a little little beads I'll put on, I and just to make them fun. And then maybe a tassel will go up here that will hang down the spine. But I wanted to show you how I did that because I did have a lot of questions. Um, and that just, that makes me feel good when I have um, questions as to how do you do this? Because see now, if you fold this in half, you've got like, it's only going to be like five and a half. Yeah, yeah, like six inches, a little less. That's, so it's really not enough once you put in the, the spine, then it's not going to be really wide enough unless you make really narrow pages. And so that's when I find a piece of another something like something like this is beautiful this is so bohemian and it's so like india like from india from the saris and stuff in india and so i will add something like this to the edge and then like i say i'll go all the way around i cover both sides of that felt and then i'll go all the way around with with um with that this this here once i fold this in half and i press it i'll iron it to where it's exactly in half and then that way when i put it around and i stitch on one side i know it's going to catch just right on the other side too if it doesn't catch real good i'll go with another um another bit of ironing but this is what i've been doing today is getting this 
this done and um, I posted one for sale on my YouTube channel the other day and it sold right away and I was really excited for that and so and then now I've got messages saying oh I wish I saw that before it sold which that just makes me happy too so I'm going to have more I'm going to have more they're going to be basically done the same way although everyone will be different none of them will be the same but I wanted to show you how I do it so that a lot of you I'm sure have got fabric and now if you don't have the felt pieces you can cut a piece of fabric that will um oh see that didn't catch right there so I'll go over that little piece right there but um any kind of a piece of fabric. I like to use the felt because I have it. I have felt and I've got some felt in some colors that I probably would never use and but um but I have it and so and it makes it it gives it kind of a heavy um quilted it, it gives it a heavy little bit of a feel to it. So scrap materials, scrap fabrics um scrap I'm scrapping Lizzie I'm telling you I like scraps and then here is a really beautiful very vintage um doily crocheted I'm going to um wet this and I'm going to stretch it with pins to because it's kind of curled up so they call that something I can't remember now but um I'm going to fix that so that it'll lay flat and then I'll probably use this one because I just love that. It kind of looks like a little windmill, doesn't it? And so that's pretty. So that'll make a real pretty closure. All right, that's what I wanted to show you. I wanted to thank I wanted to thank um thank the girls for the for the gifts that you sent. I I can never thank you enough for these beautiful gifts that you sent. And um and let me just let me get one card here and I'm just going to pick one right here. Okay, let's see what this one says. Always have to end on a positive note. End everything on a positive note. Always even end your day on a positive note. Um, think something, even if your whole day went bad, think about something positive to end your day with before you go to sleep. Okay, this says, I am much greater than my body or my brain. You're not merely your physical self. You existed before you came into your physical body and you will exist after you leave your body. This is something I'm really learning about at this time. Um, and what my understanding is, and it makes sense to me, is that when this earth, the universe, was created, every spirit was created, everyone's spirit was created at that same time. Now, like you think about a string of hair, one very long thread of hair, and a drip of water, just dripping, one drip of water on this thread of hair, starts at creation, ends at eternity. And that little drip of water on that hair is, is you. And once that dissolves, once it evaporates, well then you're done with that body. But your spirit is still there and will be there forever forever because when you die by the farm ten toes up dirt nap whatever you want to call it when that happens that's only your body your spirit is still there it's still there because your thoughts your personality all of that is still there i guess i didn't need to really tell all that but it's it's 
it's just there. It's just there. So, you know, your loved ones are still all around you. You know, sometimes you, you um, crossing the street and you say, oh, my gosh, I almost got hit by that car. One of your spirits, one of your ancestors, maybe from 200 years ago, may have pushed you out of the way so you didn't get hit by that car. Okay, y'all are and sure now you guys think I am totally off my rocker, but that is the way I think. So let me read this again. I am much greater than my body or my brain. You're not merely your physical self. You existed before you came into your physical body and you will exist after you leave your body. I love this one. And thank you. Susan is the one that sent me these cards and I have gotten a lot of wisdom from these cards. So thank you so much, Susan Hill. These are wonderful. Okay. And now I'm going to say good night. I'm going to call it a night now. And, um, and I want to thank you all for being here with me and for watching. And I ask God to watch over you every step you take, every move you make. And I will see you on the next video. God bless.